Hello good people, today I'm going to show you a way to get better in and out painting results with the crop and stitch node in Comfy UI. As always, everything you need, including this workflow, will be linked in the description below. Make sure to update Comfy UI first before you move on. And when you drag and drop the workflow, if you see red nodes like this, it just means that you're missing nodes. And the great thing about Comfy, it tells you the nodes that you're missing. So take a screenshot, write them down, whatever you need to do to remember. And within Comfy UI, if you click on Manager and select Install Missing Custom Nodes, Comfy will identify the node package that you need to install. For this particular workflow, you're going to need these two node packages, RG3's Comfy UI nodes. This is widely used by most people that use Comfy. And then this one called Comfy UI in Paint, Crop, and Stitch. Go ahead and install those, shut down Comfy UI, and restart. I'm going to show you an exploded version of the workflow. It's just much easier to explain the breakdown. And I'm only going to go through what's different from this workflow compared to your standard generation workflow, okay? So the first few nodes are your typical ones. To use the in-paint, out-paint model, you need to load it into the unit folder. In my case, I'm using the FP8 version because it's only, I believe, 11 gigs if I remember correctly. Then you have your dual clip loader and your VAE loader, the clip text and code nodes for both positive and negative prompts. This is a little different, differential diffusion. This is a node needed to do in and out painting, otherwise your results are gonna be kind of crap. And in order for us to do both in and out painting, we need this nodes here, extend image for out painting, in paint crop. And there's one more here at the very end called in paint stitch. And the way I have it set up is a load image node. This is where you're going to input the image that you want to perform in or out painting. So we have the image input connected to this image input masked mask to extend image for out painting. Now I have them on both for reason. Basically what we're going to do is bypass this when we do in painting. I'll show you that in a second. And then we do the same thing with the in paint crop node, image to image, mask to mask. On the in paint crop node, we have cropped mask to mask on the in paint model conditioning, cropped image to pixels, and then stitch. I have it rooted. I've done a better job at rooting something I don't normally do, but I'm doing more of it. But anyway, stitch will be connected here on in paint in stitch and then on the VAE decode we connect image to in painted image and then we get our output image here okay now coming back to the cleaned up workflow as I mentioned I have out painting and in painting on the same workflow okay but I want to cover in painting first so when you don't want to use out painting I left a little note here you just have to right click over the node and select bypass and now this node is going to be disabled. Let's go through the settings really quickly here. These two I'll come back to afterwards because they only pertain when you're using a context mask. But this one, fill mask holes, keep it on true. This is if you create a mask and they have little holes or maybe you miss a spot, it's going to automatically fill. Blur mask pixels, default is 16. And this grows the mask and blurs it by the specified pixels here. That's kind of how inpainting works. It takes the existing image, blurs it, and creates something from those pixels. I've never really had to increase this and the only reason I would, if you're still getting bad results with blend pixels, then I would increase this in small increments of like four to six, but typically 16 is fine. Invert mask is as it is. If you wanted to say mask out a person, but change the background, you can invert the mask of the person. You can flip this to true, and then it'll invert the mask so that maybe you want to change the background, right? Blend pixels is for the seams. I think default is at 16 and maximum is 32, I believe. Can it go higher? Yeah. I put it at 32, it seems to yield the best results for me. Rescale algorithm, 
This is for rescaling the mass portion. Leave it at bicubic. This is what is recommended. Now for mode, you want to put it on four size if you're using Flux, SDXL, 1024 at 1024. You could make this higher if you wanted more detail, more resolution, but in most cases 1024 is good. If you're using SD 1.5 by chance, change this to range size and then you could set your minimums here. So for SD 1.5, you could put 512 in both of these and maybe 768. I would leave the default padding and then free size uses a rescale factor so what's happening with all these modes is that if you're masking a small portion of the image theoretically it's going to generate it in its native resolution so say 1024 for clocks or sdxl and then it's going to down sample it back to its size so that you get maximum quality so if you were to use this version, let's say I wanted to do 25%, I'd put 1.25%. So far I found four size at 1024 works very well. And then the last part here, in paint stitch. This is the last part of the in paint process where it's going to take the generated mask area, plop it back down on the image, and stitch it back to the base image. And biz slurp or by slurp, this is the recommended setting. It is a bit slower in the process, but it gives you the best quality. Now, in terms of the in painting process, it's actually pretty simple. There are two different methods we could do. So once you load the image and right click and select open in mask editor. We've gone over this already in the previous video, but you can change the thickness of your brush, the opacity, your point type is either square or circle. And then you have a choice of colors of black, white, or negative. I like to do negative. In this demonstration, what I did was I just masked out the glass here click on save to node and now you see the mask applied to the image right and in the prompt i added a cute and adorable mouse wearing glasses and a suit eating cheese you see the before and after result here and if we zoom in closer here you see that there are no seams no weird edges everything blends really well so that's the benefit of using the crop in stitch node compared to the basic workflow we looked at previously now as previously mentioned we have optional context mask and what that does is that when you generate the mask if you see the sample here when i was generating this image look at the bottle here and the surroundings right so basically without the context mask it's taking a rough area of the image and using it as information, which in most cases will do. The model takes in context its surroundings so that it can blend it with the image properly. Now, for whatever reason, if your image isn't coming out and it's not picking up the surroundings or things just don't seem right, sometimes using the context mask helps to give the AI more information. Let me demo how that works. Let's take the same image and I'm gonna move this over here. Let's bring this back down. And all you have to do is connect mask to optional context mask. We right click, open in mask editor. And now you can state the area of context. So let's say I wanted more context of the image. I can do an outline like that, but really you can just click on a point, click on an opposing point. So you want to do corner to corner, either way, it doesn't matter. And just click save to note. And now when I generate the image, you notice in the sampler here, we have a bigger context window. So this is really helpful if you've ever done out painting or in painting and you're getting like another person or you're getting just weird results. This is a good method to try if those things are happening to you. I would recommend keeping the default settings to 20. If you're still getting weird results, just go by increments of 5 to 10. Or you can do factors, again, by percentage. If I wanted to expand the context by 25%, just put 1.25. Personally, I found the default settings fine. The only other thing I would mention for both in and out painting, for flux guidance, you want to experiment between 10 to 30. I find 30 actually works for whatever reason. The in and out painting models require 
a higher guidance. Now in terms of outpainting, it's really the same process. So if you want to use outpainting, make sure to enable it by clicking on bypass. Mode, you can do factors, again, 25%, 50%, really up to you. I like to do pixels because you could be more specific and you can increase it up, down, left, or right by pixels, okay? Now theoretically, if I put 200 all around, you should be able to generate the image. It's just typically when you do all four sides, sometimes it's prone to seams. I personally haven't come across it yet, but if that's happening to you, I recommend you stick to X axis, Y axis, so left and right or top and bottom. So here's the original image, extended 400 pixels, added 200 at top and bottom to get this final image. And again, if I look around, I don't really see any seams. The blur you see at the foreground and background is called bokeh. It's a photography term for blurry background or foreground. So it's supposed to look like that, but uh, yeah, looks really good. Much better results than just using the basic workflow. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. This workflow is going to be linked in the description. Now, in case you haven't seen the control net video on Flux Canny in depth, make sure to check it out right here. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.